All right. We talked a week ago. Mm -hmm. And you are on your third week now of the protocol. I think it's longer than that, actually. I think it might be four weeks. I started September 4th. So it's been, so been four weeks. September okay. 4th. And it's been, um, and you've done the protocol before, right? How many times have you done the protocol? Probably 10. Okay. So you've done it over 10 times. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you and I have been working together over the summer. Mm -hmm. And we got you to a position where you... You know, in my mind, it's like, okay, let's challenge where you're at. And in your mind, you're like, okay, let's lose some weight. And right, right. Yep, mm -hmm. And you immediately that whatever was unconscious became very clearly conscious for you. Right. Yeah. Okay. So here we are. And in this process and you've struggled and you've been like, ah, oh, I'm cheating or whatnot. And did you ever, and, and now you're, and then you go out of cheating and, you know, why am I doing this? What's the point? Mm -hmm. Because we've taken away this idea that the reason is for you to feel better about your body. Right. That's not why we're doing the protocol. Um, right. Right. Because all that has done is created problems and ego and, and right. you know, that self-righteousness around... Um, I'm happier in a thinner body, that type of self-righteousness, right? Right. And we've, we've been challenging that because, um, when you feel that way, what happens to your issues with food? Uh, it, it's completely intensified, magnified, and I'm either, you know, having horrible feelings, horrible deprivation and, and wanting to eat or wanting to starve and, and trying to, you know, really get my weight down. Mm -hmm. And it's intense. You go between feeling right. deprived. So so yeah. Dieting. Yeah. And that's what you've been doing for, since you were a child, since you were first put on, you know, diet pills with your therapist. And, yep. you know, as a child, your parents saying she needs to lose weight for, yep. because I don't want to take her out pop blank. Right. The, that type of pressure. So here we are. How old are you? I'm 56. Okay, so it's been over 45 years mm -hmm. that you've been focused on being thin is the most important thing. Can't have food, the thin righteousness, the, you know, feeling ashamed when you're overweight, feeling pretentious when you're thinner, right? Extremely, yeah. Yeah, and you're, so you're getting these, like, feelings of I want to be thin to feel better about myself and put myself back in the front pews of the church or on the pet actually the, 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 you know, the pedestal preaching your thinness That's all I knew, yeah. and then the suffering, right? You're, you're real, you're seeing it more clearly now because, uh, yeah. you know, and that to me is where I, the protocol is so valuable. Do you see more clearly now why, where I was in terms of, okay, I think you're ready to do this. This isn't I about understand why we were, yeah, I really did not clearly understand why we were doing this. However, I didn't care because I was going to get those away. Yeah. So now if I were to, if I were to say what I said to you before you even started, this round is a test to see where you're at. Do you get the euphoria of the thinness? Do you still think that you're improving upon your life and self by losing weight? Do you still feel that, you know, that ego and get the euphoria. That's the high of the weight loss, right? That's the addiction. And can you, and are you capable if you feel that way to dissolve it and to unravel it? The other thing is on top of that, we're, we're taking this abundance of food and we're making it so much smaller. So can you do that with humility and, and to say, you know what, I'm, I'm not hungry. I'm not being deprived. Can you adjust around the concept of deprivation? right? Without making the body euphoria, what you're balancing, right? In terms of motive. Did I make sense there? Yeah. There's a whole lot of things going on there. Yeah. So can you reduce your food and not be entitled to this righteousness of weight loss? Right. And if we're right. not being entitled to the righteousness of thinness and the healthness and feeling betterness and I'm a, I've, I have a better body now. If you remove all that, then 
you know, what is going to make this limitation in choice. That's all this is. There's a limit of choice around the protocol because you're not as hungry. Um, why are we doing this? And it has to be enough to where you don't feel deprived. You know, we're in your mind. This is, I can do this. It's not depriving, right? Right. <clears throat> what is, what makes it worth it? And in my mind, it is the actual test of being handed your candy, right? This is giving you what you have put on a pedestal for so many years and what you have worshipped and fantasized about and that you've had before and put yourself on a pedestal before. We're giving you what that is. And it is a true test to of your humility that I'm not going to take it and feel all better about myself because what I want to use to feel better about myself is my character, right. whatever that is, you know, right. I'm not going to get buy into this Ill illusion, right? That you're improving upon yourself because that's an illusion because right. you're really not relative to the ability, right? To live in any body type, right? If right. you have an ability to live in any body type, is this really improving upon this life? No. You got it. You've got it. So the illusions don't have any power because a thin body, a fat body, can you live in both? Yeah. Yeah. And you could make a really fabulous life in a fat body. Couldn't you? Just like you can live with no legs. Correct. It's, an, it's a matter of ability in your um, sense of a body. People who don't have the ability of a sense of a body they need an easier body to be happy. They haven't developed a sense. And would you agree that that's something that we have worked on with our, you know, what we've done with the visualizations of living in these, in a body that's fatter than the one that you have. Yeah. And if you can, then you immediately are set free. Right. So here we are giving yeah. you an easier body and can you keep yourself separate from it? Can you keep yourself separate from people's perceptions of it? Mm -hmm. You know, anyway, so I going back, tell me how this week has been for you. Okay. So what I was going to expound upon was one of the really good things about doing this is that you can really, once you understand what's happening, once I understood what was happening, I could really kind of predict what my behavior was going to be. Even uh, these little tests that come up, these little challenges are not failures at all. I mean, they're really l lessons for me to learn mm -hmm. and feelings that I need to um, sort of experience. And that in the exciting part of it is that I, even when something happens, even when I'll call it a cheat, even when I diet, I never go back to what it would have been before, which would be either starving or... Um, you know, eating everything in the house or whatever. And it's, it, this is like such a major accomplishment because I've never in my life been able to go on a diet, eat something and not ruin it. And I know everybody knows what I'm talking about. And just continue on, just like, okay, that was a bump in the road and get back on the horse here, you know. And I just, it just, and not to lose weight, but just to just continue with this challenge, with this test. Mm -hmm. to check out my, you know, where I am and how I'm reacting to all this stuff. Because there's a lot of stuff going on. There's the, you know, the hunger that I have to pay attention to. There's the not getting swallowed up by the weight that I'm losing. The I body checking. Because you've been body checking, right? You check if you're, you're yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. And I do that a lot of different ways, like trying on my smaller clothes and, you know, all, all kinds of weird stuff like that. But yeah, but sure you're seeing it now. You actually are seeing it now. Like, okay. Yeah. And the more I do this, this is what's happening with my food. Right. And the more right. I, you know, uh, in the, you, you're now seeing it from the outside. Wouldn't you agree? Like, you're now having a pers perspective that makes it easier for you to see yeah. it. You're not so close to it. It's coming It's further and further away now. So how much power... 
what's happened to the power of your weight loss or size loss? Um, it has lost its power. It's losing and, its power. Um, yeah, it has lost its power. And what I told you earlier was these moments of time that left is what I suddenly realized that I haven't been thinking about food or my body are just so pleasing to my psyche. I've never experienced anything like that before, maybe since I was 10 years old. And That's where it doesn't matter to you. It doesn't matter. It just, I don't even, it not only does it not matter, but I don't, I'm not even thinking about it, which is, you know, for me, new. Yeah. Because I thought about it all the time, all day, all night, you know, and it just wasn't even there. Plus, um, I'm, I'm starting to be able to read my body a lot better about when I, whether I'm actually hungry. Okay, I don't know if I was hungry before. Yeah, that's that's where I was actually going to I was going to say that like, oh, so have you noticed as you start to not care, like you literally do not care about the weight loss, the size loss or where it's at. Have you noticed that your issues with food are just just as small? Yeah, yeah that how the, those two work in unison and how as you start to feel more free as in terms of identity, how you identify yourself in the world and with people is if, as you feel more free from what your body size and shape is that your issues with food go away. It's not the first, the issues with food are not the primary problem. Do you see that? Um, yeah, that, yeah. And that your issues with body image are also not primary, even though they are the main focus. That the actual issue is how you, the concept of yourself in relation to society and humanity. The concept of self, how you identify yourself. You're getting a stronger sense of that identity, right? Yeah. I am, you know, where we talk about there's a character, there's an integrity of what that is. It's a very human feeling. It's not a me, I separation from you feeling. It's a, a human connectedness mm -hmm. with the earth. Have you started noticing that your appreciation for the land and earth and trees, has that started to get bigger? No, but there are other things that I appreciate immensely now. Like what? Like my friends and my family. Okay. <laughs> Humanity. And, uh, yeah, people. Mm -hmm. In general, which is wonderful. Yeah, because before I mean, you were kind of a direct, narcissist. There's a, direct, there's a direct correlation between your focusing inward and that clutch that your mind has over food, whether it be eating it or not eating it. There's a direct correlation about where you want. If you, if you, if you can get outside yourself. And realize that you're part of a group and start appreciating the people around you. That clutch, that, that grasp, that all the that insanity thinking has over you, it just just releases itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. And it kind of does it on its own. We don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't require that you control well, it. Because we're not thinking about it. Yeah, you don't have to control it. It just doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, I was just saying that before, in a social environment, you were very narcissistic. Extremely. Okay. We had talked about that narcissism, that you would take every situation and flip it around to be me on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have that pedestal, there was this, like, hiding or the shame or I won't go out unless I'm center, front and center, right? And right. where am I in terms of... Where am I in the pecking order of other people in this space? Do my clothes, are my clothes better than theirs? Right? Mm -hmm. How you would try to do that. You were creating separation with people, right? I'm better than them. They are less than me. They're, they're in my same echelon, right? There's that separation with humanity created by all of these, like, beliefs around body image, money image, cloth image, education image, all those things that you were doing. And as those are starting to dissolve and you are starting to feel more connect, does it, would you say in terms of how you feel socially, which one's better feeling better about other people or feeling connected to everybody? Which one is connected, connected, 
Um, yeah. So putting yourself in an equal plane. Yeah. Well, and it didn't it feel like you had to put on a show or pretend, oh, and you God. had to put on like a facade. It's like putting on. It's like being an actress. Like, who am I going to act like today, and how do I do it? So now you're just seeing yourself. Um, it's a uh, when I say humility. Would you agree that that's what this has taken? For you to have what you're getting right now with this connection, it took a lot of humility. Yeah. You had to kind of, don't you agree, you had to go into, well, what if I am fat permanently? What if I don't have the right clothes permanently? What if we yeah. don't have all of this? You have to go into those things as if they're not available to you anymore. Yeah. Right? You, you yeah. can't just, you have to surrender those things to get to the reality or the truth. You have to say all these things that I put on as a facade, I have to let them go. I have to take off the armor. I have to put away the weapons. I have to take all this game and I have to, to no longer use it. And what's going to happen is you're going to be exposed to reality. And reality isn't something that you can put in a box. Right. Right. You can't take a human being and the essence of the energy that we're created from and put it into a box. Right. right. So if you. Well, that's very scary for some people, including me. Well, it's scary okay. for people who are used to a box. The box feels right. comfortable. It's like that's what makes yeah. me feel safe. If I'm better than other people, I feel safe. Mm -hmm. Right. But what if you're not? What if you're no different than anybody else? <clears throat> now, the, the reason why it doesn't feel safe is because it's not easy. If you go into reality, it's not easy to define it. It's kind of undefinable, right? It's something reality. that just, yeah, it's in terms of how you connect with other people. How do you define, how do you define, if you were to explain to someone, when you go into your environments with family and friends, how do you define this sense of freedom that you have right now? It's Thank you. That's what I'm describing. So a lot of people say, Robin, I want that. Give me a step-by-step -step process to get there. <laughs> You're laughing because you had the same thought. Of course I did. Because that's, that's how the box processes. It's like we need a box to feel safe. So I want another box to get out of the box I'm in. Mm -hmm. And I don't do that. I'm like, here, get just here's the door. Yeah, Walk box, out. Right. And you need to go into this fearful, scary abyss of no control. And you have to find a center or a root that stems from something that's internal. That is every human being has. So you're equal. Right? We're all the same in this, in this space, on this planet. <laughs> Why do we have to sit around and try to conquer and destroy? Why do we got to do that? That's just full of insanity. There's no purpose in that right now. You don't really have a threat, you know, and why create threats when there are none? So if you are no different than the people you judged, and that's another thing we had to go into is what if you're that person that you used to shame, right? And we, we talked about, there's my dog. We talked about, um, you know, your mother and her need to feel superior Right. And she used you to feel superior and she needed you to, um, as a form of superiority. You have to dress this way. You need to look this way. We're, we need to feel the superiority. And that that was a true source of suffering for her. Yeah. Oh, and, I know. I know it was. And you suffered great, have suffered greatly as well. Mm -hmm. Right. The eating disorder, the severe anxiety, the social issues that you've had. The narcissism, you've discussed how mean you've been and you don't like it, but you don't know how to stop. You don't know why, right? Having to surrender all of that. It's like, if you don't have to be better than anybody, what happens to the need to be mean? There is no reason. No, there isn't. It's amazing. Well, it's there's, just, there's a lot of, uh, it's a lot easier to have grace too. Oh my God. Isn't that the best part? Like, do you feel at this point that you really understand what grace is? Mm 
that's the that's the grace around even what you're doing for yourself on this round of the protocol. You're giving yourself the grace to learn this, to understand it. This doesn't have to be perfect. Um, because the point isn't physical right now. What I what I've done is I've positioned you to make this. This is emotional. This is about your concept of self, how you identify yourself in a body how you identify yourself with other people's opinion about your body and this relationship that you've had that's so dysfunctional with food because of all of this drama, right? When this is over and you're in a thinner body, right? And you're in a smaller body wearing those small pant sizes, knowing what you know or being aware of what you're aware of today, would it make sense to put yourself on a pedestal with those jeans? No. I know, right? Because if you do, you're going to recreate the same drama that you have lived for decades. Do you see no that now? Yes, I have no intention of repeating that. So what you've got to be willing to do, and this to me is like, oh, this is the essence of rehab and the recovery. You're going to get your drug, and you're not going to get euphoric over it. And you're noticing that the euphoria is dying down and you're going to get smaller. And normally people would get even more anxiety about, oh, I have to keep this. Right. The euphoria is like I have to people have to know that I'm thin and I have to prove that I'm still thin. And the pressure gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. Mm -hmm. And what's happening for you now is the opposite, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, my God. This is I love this. This is so cool. Um, I wish this was studied more. I, I'm, I'm sitting here doing this um, through yeah, trial and error. It's so, it's, uh, it's so frustrating to hear the rest of the world talk about this. Yeah, I know. Well, the, what you're hearing and what's so frustrating is the major block, which is food addiction. Mm -hmm. You believed that before, didn't you? Oh, God, yes. Sugar addiction, food addiction. How, that's what they told me, and that, why wouldn't I believe a doctor? Well, I, I know that, but they're, they don't really... Now that you've had this experience, and you look back, do you agree that that is causing more problems than it is creating a solution? Yes. Yeah. Because you're not taking responsibility for your concept of self in the body. Right. And these, it's not even addressed. Yeah. It's not even discussed. That to me, do you? And, and here's the crazy thing: there are thousands of, sci, of of studies on binge eating disorders and and all sorts of eating disorders that clearly have created a clear distinction and 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 um, it's clearly known the body image as the cause of eating disorders. It is the foundation of the issues with food. Right. How are these people saying that it's the food? That's the problem. Without acknowledging... Too much money being made out there by too many people. And power. A lot of people love power. All the sugar addiction stuff is about power. Someone likes to feel like they're an expert even though they have no idea. Right? Why don't they discuss how these people feel bad about their bodies and how they deprive themselves and that deprivation, what that does to their sensitivity to food, right? You get this now. What does feeling deprived do to your sensitivity to food? What was that? What does feeling deprived with food, what does it do to your sensitivity and need for food? It's completely magnified. Correct. So when you do brain scans of people who are self-proclaimed sugar addicts, they should probably have that bias discussed that these people deprive themselves, that they feel ashamed about their bodies. They've been dieting for decades and it's more about their fear of getting fat than it is about the sugar. Mm -hmm. Right. And they deprive themselves of something and they now have this forbidden fruit kind of emotionality around it. So what's Take two people, someone who doesn't diet or deprive themselves, compared to someone who diets and deprives themselves and is ashamed of their body and fearful of food, 
and who is going to respond to the food, which one's going to have, you know, look at their brains. The person the who doesn't like deprive or feel bad. Of, food is a drug. Yeah, they have anxiety and panic and there's tons of fear involved. And it's, and, and it's not just there, there is a cause, right? That's what's not discussed is the cause that the, right. their, their beliefs, their perceptions of themselves, how that affects their behavior with food. That has to get discussed. And without that discussion, it's it's very short-sighted and actually very misdirecting to just say it's the food. Right. The food makes you eat it. You can't just stop there. That is so uneducated is what it is. Well, they do talk about signs and disorder or whatever it is and the fact that all of the people, all of the people with eating disorders do supposedly, you know, have this issue. But yeah, but they don't talk about issue. why they have it. Why do they right. have this over-sensationalized sense right. of body? Why does that exist? You know, you and I have gone there because you feel this this superiority in thinness. You right. think that it makes you a better person. If you study anorexia, it's a very ego-driven disorder. Right. The ego behind your body image, that's why they have anorexic support groups that post pictures of their thinness and they compete with other right. thin people as if right. the thinner you get and the more emaciated you get, the better you are. That is what's driving this need to be starved. You have anorexia as rest as everybody else who has a binge eating disorder. It's a form of anorexia in my personal opinion. Like I've been saying, it's like you sat in the front pews. That's anorexia. The people in the back pews are binge eaters. They have shame. It is a shame-induced sense of body. So shameful that this in that that there is this. It's almost like when you feel so overwhelmed with what has to get done, you do nothing. Mm -hmm. Those are the people in the back pews. That type of shame and overwhelming need to fix it keeps them over consuming. You've been in that, you've been there. You've been on both sides. Oh, many times, yeah. Yeah, the back pews are the ones that are shamed. They cover themselves up. I'm such a piece of shit. And the front pews sit all straight, have their hair all perfect, and they pretend like they're superior and need to be speaking to the group. I've been in both rows many times. I know. Have you ever been at the pulpit? The pulpit people are probably the worst. They're the narcissists at their pulpit, right? saying like you that. cannot eat sugar because us thin people feel so much better and we feel so much more controlled and we're so free in our thinness and control. There's so much freedom in it. And I feel so much better about myself and you should lose weight too. No, I never did that. Well, that's probably because you didn't want the, the, the pro you wanted the lenience to be able to binge. Right. Well, I didn't, yeah, I'm not uh, somebody that, would reach out and tell everybody else what to do. That's just not me. I know a lot of people that do that. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah, well, I'm one of them. I'm here. I'm on my pulpit. You could say I'm a narcissist, but it's not about me, that's for sure. It's about this concept. Who knows? Someone out there, diagnose me. So, yeah, so we're a month into this, and uh, I'm getting the sense that it's, you're getting it. It's connecting now. So yeah. when I say to you, you're going to get thinner, and that ultimately is what you're going to want, because that is your proof. <laughs> well, it's not about proving yourself, but that is what you want, because ultimately, if you can get thinner and not care and care less, you are recovered. You don't have a disease. You're not addicted to food. You're not even addicted to weight loss anymore because you're in it and dissolving it as, a, as it's occurring. I'm going to repeat this. If you're, if you're addicted to thinness, true recovery is when you're handed your thinness and you don't get the euphoria. It doesn't matter. You don't have the need to body check. And in the end, the real test is when you can go back to food and you're okay regaining some weight. If that is, if you can do that, you'll never struggle again. This will, this is over. I'm looking forward to that. Well, you're doing it right now. I am. That's the coolest part. Are you getting a sense that what you're doing now is what you're going to do forever? There is, yeah. you're detaching from it. 
That's what it takes is detachment. I personally do not identify myself by this body. I don't. That's why I look so different. Every time I do it, I'm not wearing makeup. My I buzz my hair. I don't care. I'm not trying to prove or be anything. I'll put my hair down. I wear different clothes. I mean, I don't identify by this body, and I certainly don't identify by other people's opinion about it. Right? One way or the think other. Yeah, I don't care. So it doesn't matter. So I don't even think about what other people's opinion is. You know, think of the freedom in my thinking because of that. For years, I was given this position, right? Oh, my God. I mean, your body, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that I had to surrender, right? A lot of people are like, well, you've ne never been overweight. Yeah, I have. I've been 30 pounds overweight. I was 180 pounds when I decided to be in you know, to go into the anorexia a little further, you know, I ended up 140 something and, um, and I got so many compliments in my 140s and they had no idea the psychosis that was going into it. They just saw me and went, Oh my God, you're so hot. Look at your body. People still do that. And it doesn't affect me. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I don't identify by that. It just exposes them and how they identify. And I feel bad for them to a certain degree. And I let them have it. Right? Yeah. Anyway, so I'm excited for you. Me too. Yeah, that's exciting that you're excited. You get it. You're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Now you're understanding it. Can you? It's kind of confusing, though, right? If you still believe in the thin righteousness or health well, righteousness. Until you let go of it, until you really let go of it, you can't really get much further than that. I would agree, right? So many people are like, but however, wouldn't you agree that you're letting go? You did feel freedom as you let go. It's just not like this. Well, I was just about to say that. It was easy when I was bad. Yeah, I know, right? And that's but what I tell people. I'm like, hey, if you... It's like taking heroin and putting it in front of a heroin addict and saying, don't care about this. Okay, I want you to repeat that. Say it again. It was easy when I was fat not to care. However, when I lost weight and I got my drug, which is like taking heroin and putting it right under the nose of a heroin addict and saying, here you go, oh, don't care. Don't care about this. The high. I thought that was impossible. <laughs> so now you're getting high and you're no longer emotionalizing it. It's like, yeah, you know what? I'd rather be fat. If that's, mm -hmm. if this, because in order to maintain the high, is it worth the suffering of what you have to do to maintain the high? No. That is the key. Do you get it now? Yeah, I get it. It's not worth it. I would remember when we first started, I said, I have a potion. And when you drink this potion, yeah. it's going to make you fat permanently. Would you drink it? Well, that was easy. Correct. And, and because hard. it gives you the freedom from caring. Uh -huh. Right. The next one is, okay, we're going to give you the other potion and it's going to make you feel, it's going to make your genes fit better and people are, you're going to be thinner and more noticeable and people are going to pay attention to you. But would you can't mean anything to you. You yeah you gotta know. say I don't care uh, because the problem is if you get the high off of it now you have to work to keep it right and that is the suffering is what you have to do to work to keep it it's full of suffering but there's so much freedom in the fact that I work to keep it and I keep it and it's worth the work because I get freedom of everybody's that's love and attention. Freedom. No, no, I don't know that anybody would say that. Oh, crazy. trust that's me, my friend. Her. People say it all the time. Oh, okay. geez. Being be thin harder. and healthy is my freedom. Ow. Okay, how does that sound to you at this point? Gross. I know. Well, it's unfortunate because they are they don't... I didn't even care about being healthy. I just wanted to be thin. 
Well, imagine that this was about health. Take it to that level of poison. Okay. Well, my body's going to do what it's going to do. Well, that's the that's ultimately the humility that it takes to get rid of orthorexia. Orthorexia is the health righteousness. Someone who sits in the front pews and says, I'm so healthy. I'm so much healthier now. I'm going to make sure that I become a, a coach for this, right? The health righteousness is even more poisonous, in my opinion, because you're taking something that is got that might have some sus substance to it, right? And you're poisoning it. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I have done so many things to my body that I knew weren't healthy, but I didn't care because I was so focused on my goal. Yeah. That I never felt like. I was headed towards anything that had to do with health at all. Mm -hmm. Well, and the unfortunate thing for people who are, you know, into the health righteousness is they actually think that this dieting is healthy. Yeah. Because doesn't, don't we need to be thin and don't we need to lose weight? I mean, look at the obesity epidemic. I mean, it's a real crisis. I mean, do you hear how this can be confusing to people? Yeah, um, Even with my yeah, my pretentious voice. It's like, yeah. that's how people get, but 97% of all the people trying to lose weight are getting fatter. So how much, what percentage of this obesity epidemic are dieters? Well, I mean, that's why it's so instant. That's why you realize, what, what, and then I mean, the purest definition of insanity is that you know in your own mind that you're going to have this is never going to last and you're going to have to do it over again. And why do you keep doing it to yourself when you know it's not going to, you know. Well, because you're addicted to the thinness. Remember the euphoria? It's like taking heroin. Yeah. That's what that is. But at the same time, you're competing with the survival mechanism around food and the need for food. So it's right. like this euphoria with thinness and then feeling this incredible impulse to eat that you have to be, you have to have self control in. Okay. And then this, so it's like this facade that's so easily collapsible, right? The euphoria of the thinness can go away like this as soon as you start eating because you need to get that mammal, um, human, animal need for food. And you're going to fulfill that need, which is a real physical need. And the euphoria of the freedom from the shame. Cause that's another thing they don't talk about the, the shame around food and having the freedom to eat without shame is so incredibly powerful in terms of a narcotic. Is it really just the food or is it the freedom from having to feel bad about it? Which one is more euphoric? The freedom from not having to worry about it. That's what the binge is. That's what a binge is. It's a momentary freedom from the shame that is very euphoric, but in the end, it is short lived because you have to deprive yourself to fix the damages so you can continue to pursue this thin, health righteous idol. Mm -hmm. Do you see it clearly now? I mean, is it starting yeah. to be like, oh my God, do you really want to stay in that culture? Do you really want yeah. to be a part of that culture and to support it? Look at the diet industry, the food mongering industry, the health diet industry. Is that trustworthy? No. You, They're not in it for anybody's health. It's just to make money. And for power. Power mm -hmm. and money. Power, I think, is a huge drive of the orthorexic industry. The fear-mongering of food, that's very power-hungry and money-hungry. People like to feel like they have, they have power, right? I have followers. Look at all my followers. <laughs> Oh, it's pretty disgusting when you really look back at it. And most it people is. don't question it. I mean, going back to your childhood when your therapist put you on diet pills. I mean, just think about her brainwashing to do that to a child. She clearly didn't know the consequences of that or the consequences of this, but she didn't question the morality around thinness. That's what she believed in too. So why wouldn't she support thinness? This would be like going... This would be like being in a cult, a religious cult, and going to therapy with someone within your religious cult. Right. How's that going to help you? They're not going to discuss the negatives of their own culture. 
when they praise and, and worship it. They're not going to point the arrow at the actual cause, right? Right. That would cause an incredible amount of cognitive dis dissonance. They don't do that. They, they get even smaller in their thinking when someone threatens their religion or their thoughts, right? They even get more, they get more passionate about their crazy dream. Anyway, so here we are. How much longer do you think you can do this very low calorie portion of the protocol? Well, um, you said you wanted to do this call as best possibly good. Well, that, that really is with, good. you have to balance that right with your, um, how you feel physically, how you feel emotionally about the actual protocol. You're noticing as you're less, there's less caring, it's easier. You're not cheating as much, the less you care. Um, the impulses to eat are going away, the less yeah. you care. Um, so if it's getting easier for you, then keep on going. Yeah. Right? And then when you believe, when you feel, because uh, what you're going through, would you agree that the back and forth and the opening your mind and observing it, that there is, you're getting a ton of... Uh, this is really helping you. Oh, um, yeah. Getting the euphoria and then dissolving it as it occurs. That is incredibly yeah. important. Don't you agree that when this protocol is over, that that is what you're going to have to do to go back to eating in reality, to that table of abundance? Mm -hmm. No. So what you're doing now is what you're going to have to do when this is over and what you're going to have right. to do when you're bloated and what you're going to have to do when you feel like you're getting fat. Right. You're going to be like, I don't care. I'm letting this body image go. I don't want the euphoria. I don't care about the euphoria. I don't want to have to maintain this. It's not worth hell. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Thinness or hell. Thinness and hell or let the body be what it's going to be in freedom. Yeah, I'll take the second thing. I know. I know, right? So, it's exciting. Yeah. Okay, is there anything you want to say before I stop recording this? No, I don't think so. All right, thanks for letting me share.